I knew that I wanted to be a pilot when I was about four years old. When I was that age, which was a very long time ago, I didn't know any black pilots. I didn't know any female pilots. And I didn't know any black females who wore eyeglasses. And yes, I wear eyeglasses, but contacts. And so I, I just, I, the world just seemed so far away from me. When I was little, I used to lie in the grass in my grandmother's backyard. And the approach end to Philadelphia International Airport came right over her house. And so I would lie there and look at the airplanes. And when I was a little older, I went to Jamaica. And on Air Jamaica, I saw these amazing black pilots. And they looked like I don't know how else to say this, but paper dolls. I mean, they were cut out and they were perfect and their uniforms were just so, they were amazing. But they weren't women, they were men. Mm -hmm. And that was Jamaica. It wasn't Philadelphia or New York where I was from. And it, again, just seemed far away. So I went off to college, graduate school and it never went away. That four-year-old inside me never kept quiet. She just kept yelling, well, when are we going to start flying? And uh, when I was in my 30s, I um, got together with my husband, and he gave me gift certificates to um, go and take a flight lesson. By then, I had done all sorts of different careers, and um, I was so grateful when I took my first flight. And that was it. I was hooked. I don't believe in regrets. Mm -hmm. I believe that you do what you do for the reason that you do it. And if it's really bad, you say that you're sorry. But for the most part, you live your life honestly and based on what you think is important. And at the time, that journalism degree, and let me explain. So my undergraduate degree is from University of Virginia, uh, Spanish literature, El Cid to the Golden Age. And my master's degree is in journalism. So my first career, I spent seven years as a newspaper reporter. And I'm going to tell you something. I would not change that for anything. And here's why. The skills I gained as a newspaper reporter were phenomenal. Mm -hmm. So all throughout training, I would, I would just take copious notes and the way my brain works is it processes once I've written it down and so that skill was quintessential not only now but for what happened later mm -hmm. so I wrote a historical fiction about Bessie Coleman and my goals are a book movie and I'd like to have 100 black women enrolled in flight school by the year 2035 that foundational skill of writing. Now, writing a newspaper article and writing a book are two different things. I like to say mm -hmm. it's a difference between riding a horse and a dog. And writing a newspaper article is almost formulaic, right? Mm -hmm. The lead, it's a middle, and it's an end. It's a lead paragraph, a body, and then an end. And there's something about that because as a police reporter, which is what I did, mm -hmm. I'd write five, six, seven stories a day. And it was quick, it was fast paced, it was exercise for your brain on how to organize things. Well, that skill was very helpful to me along the way in training, along the way in prioritizing, along the way sort of in logical thought, and along the way in writing my book. So, no, I wouldn't go back and change that. And by the way, to be a pilot, to be air, an air traffic controller, you don't have to have a degree that is aviation specific. Mm -hmm. If you have some other love or passion, and my passions are in terms of work, in terms of career, or flying and writing, in terms of life, my passions are my family. And so um, I do nothing different in terms of school. I would not that was a skill that was foundational and that I really, really, really um, used throughout my career and throughout my life. I wear my wings on my left side where my heart is. I wear my stripes on my shoulders because I stand on the shoulders of the women, especially the black women who've gone before me. I stand on the shoulders of my mentors some of whom are not black women. I stand on the shoulders of Bessie Coleman. 
and it's a song by Calvin Harris. And it says, stand upon my shoulders and tell me what you see. And what a gift to give sons, black sons, the notion that their mom can do anything that she can change, that she can write a book and fly a plane and raise them. And on my jacket, I proudly wear a United pin that says Black Lives Matter. I also wear an Alpa pin and it's an ode to unions who have fought for the right for us to fly and to make a decent wage and to have decent rest. And I will fight to make sure that 100 black women get enrolled in flight school. It's that important to me. In the industry, there are approximately 7% women, two to 3% African-American and black women who fly for a living. SOS, part of OBAP, Sisters of the Skies, part of OBAP says that we are 150 and that's military, cargo, passenger, regional. That is a percentage of 1%. That's an outrage. 100 years after Bessie Coleman went to flight school. So how do I feel about United Airlines? I love, love, love the fact that people have reached out to me, including uh, a wonderful man who's a president of United Airlines, Bret Hart, in order to talk about 100 pairs of wings. And that is the project to get black women enrolled at the Luke Weathers Flight Academy, also part of OBAP. I like to say this, I am the house that OBAP built. Hmm. I am, I'm different. I didn't have an aviation degree. I didn't have a straightforward trajectory, but people rallied around me and helped. So I like to talk about how United Airlines supported me and has been a support and it's a great place. And I'd like more of us here. I think in my life, I've learned something incredibly important and that is this. I can do all the things I want to do. I can't do them all at the same time.